Right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. So this morning, uh, we're talking. Ah, there he, there he is. He woke up. He woke up. And then Jasper's almost uh -huh. awake. So Jasper, yeah, when you get uh, older, I believe, you know, it's a bit harder to wake up in the morning. So, and I believe uh, uh, birthday wishes are due this morning. So is that correct? And you also, yeah. H happy birthday, Jasper. You're, you're the same age as me now. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Somebody can sing on the group. Yeah, to be so you can sing as well. Happy so, yeah. birthday, dear. <laughs> happy birthday to you. I will get to be so to record your song and talk about you. Yes, but just especially for your birthday. So. <laughs> You're good. Well, so this morning we're talking about. Uh, about people doing good things, I think was uh, was the the topic, Edward. So, if somebody does a does a good thing, does it make them a good person? Uh, I think was the initial kickoff on the topic, and then then we got sort of caught up in drug lords and all sorts of other interesting topics like that. So, I'm not too sure where this uh, where this is going to take us this morning. So, Ed, I'm just going to kick it across to you to to see if you can untangle some of the mess and point us in the direction of good people like uh, our friend Elon and others. Yeah, I, th I think it was conversations around people like Elon Musk and um, those sort of people, the billionaires, that kicked it off. Because a lot of people say, well, you know, they do good stuff. Um, and you think, well, yeah, but they also do bad stuff. And, you know, I think there's a great deal of good in, in the profit motive because it creates jobs, it creates wealth, but it but I think you can then take it too far and you think, well, is it a good employment if people in work have to depend on food banks to get their food? If people in work have to have handouts from the state, is the work then paying enough? Um, and also, I mean, you know, thinking back to Camborne, you know, we were at one point in time one of the wealthiest places in the United Kingdom. Now we're one of the poorest places because people ripped the um, assets out of the earth, made their fortunes and then left. Um, and then of course in, in America, you've got a, that, that term robber barons. I don't know if you come across that term. So you know, my thoughts about these people aren't exactly that new. Um, so, and then it's, you know, people say, well, well, yeah, but they give, give some money away or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, you know, would you say the same thing to someone who accumulated all their wealth through drug dealing or prostitution or trial, child trafficking? Oh, it's fine. He gave his money away. And then I started thinking about the Catholic Church. I don't know why. Um, I'm not religious at all. Apologies to anyone that is. And of course, the, you know, the, the, there used to be the, the, this... Um, concept of indulgences and in the catholic church if, if if you did good works then you spent less time in purgatory um and then the 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 the, the catholic church caught on to the idea that it could make money and they started selling indulgences um and you could buy your way out of purgatory. well not you, you still had to spend a bit of time in purgatory but you know you spent less time there and you gave your money to the church and the church then got wealthy. And then Martin Luther, the guy in Germany, not, not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther, he, he, he didn't like the idea and it stopped. Um, but it's also this whole thing about giving to charity is it, 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 in, in most religions, you know, it's, it's coming to the end of Ramadan, I think, uh, in, in the Muslim religion. And during Ramadan, they're encouraged to give to charity. Um, and then my thoughts around religion then brought me on to that thing. Um, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And, and thank you, yes, for explaining that a camel was a narrow gate. That makes a lot more sense now. So there is this concept that you can't actually accumulate great wealth and be a good person. Um, I think you can accumulate wealth and be a good person because we, 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 we talked about Cadbury and the fact that he built nice houses for his workers. And, and he said, um, 
why should anyone live in a place where a rose cannot grow? So you know the guy's heart. And we have got organizations now, and I think, you know, I, I looked at Trevor's uh, video link he showed, or no, sorry, his article link he showed about cause marketing. If he thinks B Corps have anything to do with cause marketing, he's misunderstood B Corps. So there are people that do believe that you can make a profit and do good at the same time. But I think, you know, if you're housing your workers badly, if you're paying your workers badly, if you're not, if, if, if you've taken away their final salary pension scheme, if, 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 if you've given them a zero hours contract because it's much easier to sack them then or not pay them or not employ them, if, if that, I think it was Jasper yesterday that talked, oh no, it wasn't, it was um, Herman about uh, a lack of balance in the economy. And I, I haven't read that book yet, but I'm going to read that book. So I don't think you can actually, you've got to be good at heart to be good. And if you're good at heart, you're probably not going to be a multi-billionaire. You might be a, a millionaire, but I don't think you can be that way. And, you know, by their deeds, shall you know them? And I've mentioned this before, the fact that Tesla sell off their... Um, emissions credits so other people can pollute. <clears throat> I won't pollute, but I'll take the money to let other people pollute. Kind of tells you where the person's heart is. So those are my views, and I'm sure it's rattled uh, Trevor's cage, but um, I don't mind. All right, good, good. Yeah, yeah rattling rat rat cages is, is good. It doesn't matter whose it is. So, Laura, before you completely nod off on us, maybe we better give you Give you an opportunity to put your thoughts into the conversation. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, um, yeah. So, what is good? I figured that it's contextual that um, suppose a person is forced to participate in an institution such as the military and is dictated that part of the requirement is that they kill in order to protect and defend the country upon which that person is a, is a citizen. Is that good? Suppose a person um, has an honor killing for the defense of their own religion. Is it good? Suppose a woman chooses to terminate her pregnancy maybe because she knows she can't provide for the child, maybe because her health is in danger, maybe because the child is um, at risk. Is it good if someone brings their cat to the vet on a day and finds out that the cat's teeth all need to be extracted because the cat's in tremendous pain? Is it good to save the life of the, of the cat and let the cat live and go through pain rather than killing the cat? Or is it good, better, is it more moral to end the cat's life and the suffering? It's all context. And I think that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Or what's, who am I to, who am I to say what's good or bad? Who am I to say what's right or wrong? This is all just pedantic. It's, it's just, um, it's context. I'm Laura, I'm done for now. Thank you. All right, thanks, Laura. Yeah, context, context and perspective are uh, interesting things. So, to be so, what does Nietzsche say about all of this? Well, I'm not going to talk about Nietzsche, um, but I am going to talk about, you know, my mother, that she's the only good person I know, honestly, because I don't think that it's easy, you know, having a son like me, <laughs> I think that it must be difficult, you know, um, especially because, you know, my mother's like a single mother and she has like three other children, you know, so having a, a child like me, you know, who's like very entrepreneurial, you know, um, I tried a lot of businesses in the past, you know, and they haven't worked out. And she has always seen my failures, you know, 
and she has always been there, you know. Um, it hasn't been easy because there's always that, why don't you get a proper job and, you know, just, just settle down and just do something. And I'm like, no, you have to have like an elevated perspective, you know, because, you know, I have a vision, you know, I want to build my mother a house, you know, I want us to be okay, but you know, that's all in the future, you know, and sometimes it's not easy for her to see that, you know, because I'm like, just wait for a bit, you know, but nonetheless, she's still there, you know, and she's like supportive and she still loves me, you know. Um, I'm not normal, she knows that, you know. Um, sometimes she tries to, you know, channel me in the right ways, you know, but because I see things in my way and I have a vision for my future, we sometimes slash, you know, but I still love her because I understand um, it's difficult, life is difficult, you know, but I still love her. I think that she has a pure heart, she has a good heart and she takes care of her children, you know, that's, that's, that's important to her, you know, I love that about her, the fact that she gives her life for her children, you know, she gives everything to make sure that at least they are okay you know at least we are okay i love that about her you know she's like super um she's like incredible um and i just want to give her the world uh in the future hopefully and that's what i'm planning you know damn i just love my mother you know i think that she's the most she's good She's, she's the goodest person in the world, you know? And, you know, everyone just likes her. She has this energy and I don't know. I just want to give her the world. I think I'll just talk. No, let's just leave it there. My mother, she's good. She's the only person that's good in the world, you know? So thank you, Ivan. <laughs> good, well done, well done to be so. Yeah, mothers are special people, aren't they? Right, uh, so Jasper, are we going to talk about sewing in desert chips or are you going to go in some different direction? I think because I missed some of the conversation, my internet was unstable and I'm, I'm not sure I followed the, the topic here, but I'm, I picked up a bit here and there from uh, uh, the first few speakers. So uh, I take it it's about, uh, well, I heard the word good came up several times and I, uh, from, from Ed's uh, dissertation, I picked up that, you know, does it make it good if you, uh, are a bad person, but you give money away and stuff like that. So, so I plead the fifth and uh, I want to then do uh, a Trevor on you by saying, all right, I picked my topic. Uh, so in, in picking my topic, I would then say, well, well, starting maybe with the word good, uh, what is good? And uh, the Bible uh, in Jesus's time, he, they, they called him good and he said, no one is good, but uh, the father. Um, but then the Bible itself, which is the word of the Father, defined good at one place in Proverbs 13, 22, where it says a good man, and that means a good woman or a good couple, uh, leaves a legacy for their children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And that's been the foundational text that we've used to build the whole generational movement so good then me uh, is, is that couple doesn't matter what their religion is and what their qualification is and where they come from and were they poor or where these social classes but that they dedicate their earthly life to have create a better future for their children the generation of their children's children and people like a mother Teresa come comes to mind she didn't have any children of her own but she did it for a future where people would be taken care of. Uh, so, uh, so it's for any person who dedicates his life here on earth to become that, uh, build a path on which future generations will travel, plant a tree under which future gen generations will sit. And then the age 
old wisdom says for that families, the following will happen. They will end up with the unused resources of the families who missed the mark and it will come to the families who do the right things. So I think we missed the point to try and measure people. It's the same mistake we make by measure, measure people's intelligence by these IQ tests that they do at school. And all the IQ tests do is to test the person's cognitive ability to remember that the teacher's given him. But it doesn't show the person's entrepreneurial availability uh, ability and all the other uh, skills that such a person has. And I think in society, because of media and our programming, we tend to merely uh, measure a people's so-called so success on how many uh, cars does he have in his garage that he doesn't use. I mean, a, a ridiculous example is Dostein here in South Africa. He has dedicated a whole floor where I think he's got something like 100 special cars like Ferraris and all these kind of things. But, you know, he's a sick old man. So what's the use of having all of that uh, to, to what extent? So, so, uh, so for me, it's, it's media and the so-called programming that have taught us to measure things incorrectly. So I'd rather measure the impact of, of a person in society. And, and I admire the mothers of uh, like Tabisa's mother and other mothers and fathers who sacrifice themselves uh, and maybe have menial jobs during their life out of it because they live through uh, the progress that they see in their children who now get a better education. And then I also reward those, uh, I pl applaud those children who then says, you know, I could buy my mom her first house and uh, that kind of thing. For me, that's, that's impact and that's good. But uh, uh, I think the problem that we have in society is we have this, uh, I call it materialistic instinct, and I'm, I'm to, uh, both there with Trevor and Ed, because Trevor is totally correct. If there's no uh, uh, sustainability in what you do, then, then you are a drain on society and you're dependent on donor funding and the thing is not sustainable. But it's also not just for the sake of money, for the sake of money. So I think for every person, the challenge is, when is enough enough? Uh, and I think very few people have made out for themselves that I would be satisfied if my lifestyle can be that and then draw the circle. So if I can maybe illustrate with my hands, uh, a person who hasn't defined enough enough is like an open-ended circle. So whatever money comes his way, just expand and he, he never has enough and he just keeps wasting more and more. Where, whereas a person, who gets his, in my enough is enough, and the circle is closed. Whatever else comes is now a surplus that can be made available. Now, how you make it available, I also uh, am, am in two minds about it. I personally don't trust to give my money to any institution. There's maybe one or two that I'll give my money to because uh, I, I feel I can rather uh, manage that money better in terms of doing good uh, out in society than giving it for an institution who doesn't understand uh, you know the whole process of making money and keep it sustainable so it's easy to just give money away into uh, unproductive avenues if you haven't worked for it yeah so um, I think ultimately for me is good is if in your lifetime you could have created a nurturing environment a sustainable nurturing environment where everyone, regardless of who they are and where they come from, can over time and at their pace discover and develop to become their own personal best. So yeah, so that's my uh, input for today. Great, right, thanks. Thanks, Asper. All right, Trevor, has your cage been rattled? I'm never rattled. I'm trying to get back to what the topic is here because I, I just don't understand this Jasper taking us in different directions here. Um, so let me get back. If you do good things, does this make you a good person? Uh, I don't know how we got to this blooming topic when I was going down the road that I think the, the world and civilization was built on the back of pillagers, plunderers and marauders. Um, 
And, you know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, one of the cities that I'm just blown away with uh, being New York, which I discovered uh, very late um, uh, and having played around there and gone into the history of New York and and uh, you have a look at how, I mean, there was a great movie, I'm sure uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was in it, um, about how New York actually grew out of uh, all the criminal elements there. What was that uh, movie? Tobisa seems to know it. Write it there if you know if you know the movie. It was a fantastic movie, and and it kept on leaving me with this this feeling that the thing that is keeping good from uh, being uh, the driving principle of all is that instant riches seem to go to those who are bad or evil. Um, Gangs of New York, yes, that was it. Uh, absolutely loved it, thank you. And um, so it's really a good movie to watch. And, um, and you can see the constant struggle between uh, good and evil. Uh, and if I go back and, and I think about it, I mean, there are a number of guys that have sat in prison in my lifetime that have come to me uh, with particular concepts that I've actually shunned and, and pushed aside. And I ask myself, well, why the hell did I do that? Surely, uh, you know, my makeup, listen to me, so if your mom thinks you're a bad boy, uh, I, I just don't want her to talk to my mother. Um, uh, because <laughs> all I see in you is a, is a good boy. So everything is all relative here. Um, and, and I'm thinking, you know, in, in my younger days when I was uh, sitting on the beach, if someone had to have come down and put a, a million dollars um, in, you know, in my lap, would I have questioned where it came from? Not at all. I would have taken the blooming stuff and I and I would have had a party with it in in a big way, and it would have been far easier to actually get get involved in this world uh, as opposed to the way that I did have to do with uh, getting deposits on coke bottles and buying uh, slices of bread and and poloni and you know, it's, uh, realizing that if I wanted to make something, I had to get out there and start selling things. Um, that's really the hard way to do it. And it, and it just, when, when, when pillagers, marauders, uh, plunderers, rapists, and, and evil elements, the money seems to be going in their direction, uh, it's, it's not difficult to see why many more people are bad than good. Um, or is it that many more people are good than bad? I don't know. Do the, do the few actually attract the money because they're happy just to grab it without any thought of the consequences? And then I ask myself, well, is this world designed for these people? Because, uh, you know, where Jasper works on the legacy of good, um, do these people actually invest their ill-gotten gains into assets and then those assets get left to their... Uh, future generations and what do those future generations do with it and does that then go back if you do good things does this make you a good person um, if the third in line uh, in the generation of following through on all the assets that builds up uh, tons of cars and buildings uh, decides then to make a positive difference in the world uh, is he bringing a good measure upon that family and the family's history and comple completely changing um, where they came from uh, and turning bad into good. You know what, uh, Laura, I think you just gave me the word. It was context. And I think all things are relative and that it's up to you as an individual when, whether you want to make a positive difference to society or whether you know that you are dragging society down um, and uh, what's in your heart. And I, I think that's where I concur with the Eds and the Uspers and to be so about it. I, I think just in my makeup is trying to share that it's far better to make a positive difference in society than it is. I couldn't live with myself if 
if I was deliberately going out there to kill, murder, maim, pillage, rob from other people deliberately. And, and I, I use that word deliberately, deliberately, purely for Ed, uh, because he thinks that all entrepreneurs, business operators, Elon Musk's of this world are deliberately profiting for no good purpose at all and then sharing, <laughs> sharing their profits to make a difference in the world. So I can't answer what's good or right, it's what, in, uh, it's what is in your heart. All right, thanks, Trevor. Sure, I don't know what you guys have left me to actually say. So, uh, but but yeah, it's, it's it is, you know, it, it is an interesting concept, and I think you know the, the challenge is we're human at the end of the day. So you know, there's good and bad in all of us, and uh, you know, it's just the question of which actually dominates in your mind. So it comes back to to context. You know, if you believe that you're doing good, you you're probably doing good. You know. Um, question is whether people perceiving you from the outside and the things that you're doing perceive those as those actions as being good or not but that's that's their problem not yours um so yeah i i, I think it's an extremely tough uh, uh thing to to actually make a call on because uh, you know i certainly believe that people like the gates like the elon musk's uh, you know like the warren buffett's believe that they're doing good with their with their millions the billions whether it makes them makes them good people or not um is simply the perspective that that other people have of them you know they are, i certainly believe that they believe that they're being good um so what else matters uh you know if you believe what you're doing is uh is right is good um then from your perspective from your context it is um, it may not be from somebody else's who, who who are we to judge i suppose at the end of the day uh yeah so that's uh, that's my little bit to to wrap this wrap this one up uh, so where do we go from here you know does doing bad make you a bad person I don't, yeah no, i don't think we can go there i think we've done that already so <laughs> all right uh, so okay, who's got a topic for tomorrow? Uh, anybody got a got got a suggestion uh, going on from going on from this or taking taking a complete change in direction? Maybe we should do that. Oh, I got one. Yeah. Oh, sport. Sport. Olympics are coming up. Olympics are coming up. Competition or cooperation? What's competition or cooperation in sport generally, or just uh, or in sport or just generally? Generally. Generally. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Everyone happy with that? Yeah. 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 Good. Fantastic. So have a great day for the folks. Go out and compete or cooperate, whichever one floats your boat. And uh, yeah, we if you want to be back, we're back at uh, in half an hour, top of the hour, uh, with the UK chats and then back again at uh, 3 p.m. our time, which is the I don't know sometime in your, in your part of the world, but, uh, you know, we're back again in the US, <laughs> 8 a.m. Central, uh, 3 p.m. my time, uh, 2 p.m. UK time, I think it is. And uh, yeah, if you can join us then, please do. Otherwise, have a great day. Cheers.